ladies and gentlemen, Christian Dvorak has more goals than Austin Matthews. You're just jinxing it all, Sam. He has more goals than Austin. No, 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 I know, but like, what happens when you say something like that with that magnet? Look at what happens game. the next fucking game. He's going to score five goals, Matthews. Well, listen, Matthews plays the Ducks tonight. <laughs> Matthews and the Maple Leafs play the Ducks tonight after a terrible loss against the LA Kings yesterday. And the Ducks are last place, right? The Ducks and the Ducks are not doing well. <laughs> so, but Christian, Dvor- Christian Dvorak has more goals than Austin Matthews. Did we ever think during the court Soft any, cost, any he's course tied, of the season? Slavkovsky <laughs> tied with fucking Matthews. But th- what's amazing is that Christian Dvorak scored his very first career hat trick last night against the St. Louis Blues. Yeah, that's crazy. But uh, listen, Look, this episode he was buzzing, is though, right? He was buzzing. He was we're... from the get go. He was like, okay, three three guys for three goals. Here we're buzzing on the curfew boys right now. Sammy Yo. Zook, Chris, how are you guys? Hey now, man. It's hey, been now. A while, hey now. Hey now. Hey now. Yeah, it's uh. I don't know when 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 was when was the last time we did an episode with Chris? I know Zoo. I, I you think it's been an episode a while. Year. Yeah, it's it could been be. about three episodes. Yeah. since mm-hmm. my last appearance. That's possible. Yeah, just the lineup keeps changing. You know, just like Marty St. Louis just keeps changing his lineup. It's it's uh, look. You, you got to experiment this time. You remember, uh, the year. you remember uh, previous coaching. Our best friend Joey. What he used to say about our coaching? How. Joe can say we a lot of things. Zook. Well, now we can't complain. Now it's There's hard no stagnancy to keep up here. with him. <laughs> I can so, him. I don't. Because <laughs> I want to burn him one day. I'm kidding. Wait, what do you mean burn him verbally you know what or I mean? verbally? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Listen, I don't know what goes on in the. We're not in the 1300s. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> You know, you would think human civilization has advanced since then, but no. sometimes, sometimes I, I I drive the streets of Montreal and I wonder. No, I don't. I don't think so. We definitely I don't think stumbled. so. I I had to go pick up the girlfriend at the airport earlier this evening, and no, like, like the the, the, the common knowledge, common sense, courtesy, you just stay out calm. The, like literally out the fucking window. Sure. Like you might as well jump on, take, get on a plane, and whatever common sense knowledge you have, just throw it out of the fucking airplane window if possible. Because that that's that's where we've gone as a society here in Montreal. <laughs> I don't think it's just Montreal, buddy. But yeah, no, I don't think so either. But for now, this this is this our is bubble. Our microcosm. This is our microcosm living experience in this fucking city. Do it. There's, there's traffic cones everywhere. There's but traffic one, everywhere. But, oh, forgetting that, there's one great great thing that comes out of this city. And what is it? It's the Montreal Canadiens. No, actually, it's the curfew oh, boys. There you go. Well, you were, <laughs> on the same, you were on the same train of thought, at least. <laughs> you know what? You got you to gotta follow the ripple effect. If it weren't for the Montreal Canadiens, there probably wouldn't be this friendship. If there wasn't this friendship, there wouldn't That's be the true. curfew boys. So you got you to gotta look at it that way. That's how I look at it, at least. Chris, Chris, Chris would still be in my life, but instead of splitting half our time talking about Batman movies and Montreal Canadiens, it, you know, it'd be, it'd be full on Batman movies and who would be the best Bruce Wayne. Uh, so <clears throat> Ben Affleck. <clears throat> Anyways, I digress. <laughs> I, I digress. Actually, from time to time, uh, uh, before we get back into the hockey talk, like I can't help myself. But from time to time, watching scenes from the Batman movie, the latest one with with Robert Pattinson, like it's uh, ho- who, Halloween who? coming up. That opening it's scene. So that introduces him. Who is it? Ooh, what is his name? So good. Who's the actor? Zook Pattinson, that's yeah, what it is. It's true. Uh, yeah, it's scary the resemblance. Him. Zook, you look you look better than him. And honestly, I think you'd make mm. too kind. Okay, I don't look. know if he's, yeah, a, he's a great know, actor, but no, he's a great Zook actor, looks yeah. better than uh, than Rob Pattinson. Actor. Come on, let's let's be honest here. Well, I'm a little younger, uh, <laughs> and a lot less richer too. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine by me. <laughs> I, I won't need those problems. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's true. Simple life sometimes is the best Absolutely. life, I guess. And it's... But listen, hey, um, it wasn't a simple game yesterday. Uh, the Canadians coming off a victory to the um, the Buffalo Sabres on Thursday night. Uh, you know, what a way to start the road trip. A lot of people, including myself, thought this team would have a bit of a difficult time on the road, uh, mm-hmm. considering the average age of this team is a lot younger, a lot less experience, you know. Sometimes you have hockey analysts and pros that say it for for a young team being on the road sometimes could be tough just because of the lack of experience. But Jesus Christ, uh, I mean, they played well against against Buffalo. 
congratulations to Caden Gooley on getting his first career goal. Oh, what a what shot. A, what a shot. Mm-hmm. Rocket. Come it on. was it was who absolutely says, wait. Who said once, like I think in the summertime, in one of the episodes that we were talking about the kid, you know, the, the future prospects and whatnot, mm-hmm. right? Somebody said that he has everything like well, let's say uh not rated, but like well um uh, developed apart from his scoring or shooting. Dude, since nah. first game of the season, his shooting has been not the problem. Dude, he, if has you look, fucking, if, he has a really good shot. If you look at some of his goals that he scored uh, in in so, in junior, holy kid. So why do people say he's he has, an he has offensive good, guy, man? He, he has some he, offensive he, flair. Yeah, he, he he's a very two-way defenseman. If you look I, at him, he's... I only thought he was a better defender than than offense. For some reason, that was my impression. Well, look, I, mean, I, I was like, wrong. But but you could tell that the kid, you could tell that Gooley is playing a bit differently in, mm-hmm. in a sense that he's matured because I said this earlier in another episode, he used to take a run at guys and he used to defend easily in junior. And if you look at him now, he, he, he's choosing his moments when to deliver that big hit. If not, he's playing a lot more, I guess you could say conservative, but he's a lot more aware of what's going on when, when the offense is rushing against him. Like he, he, he stays, he stays concentrated. He doesn't get, he doesn't, create the uh, odd man rushes for the the opposing team he He's, reads the game really well he reads and the game very well reads, absolutely he receives it well like he knows how to uh, how to adapt he code what's that, coming in front of them and, and that's surprising really for that age what he's he, 21 he's 21 but but God. again why why is he playing so well this kid played over a hundred games this year he's coached he's being coached well dude. that's he's, what i think is really good of, of course he's coached really no, well but but you know what i mean the right like, you know he parts the game and whatnot but in junior he played he was the number one guy in junior played so many games so many minutes and so many opportunities so many roles of, of eventually that that's going to help a, a kid grow in this game mm-hmm. it, it for for now like if you look at if you look at Suzuki's development when before he became a Montreal Canadiens, like Caden uh, uh, Gooley is going down the same path. They all went to the Memorial Cup. It's too bad he didn't go to Team Canada again uh, because of injuries. But otherwise, like it, it's it's That's the same the path. Thing. It's the we same path. The same trend. We would have seen maybe something might have been disclosed had he gone to to that tournament. So that's why maybe we're surprised now. You know what I'm saying? Because I think I think he would he would have been captain again if he. Yeah, wanted. yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know, man. I'm so, really surprised of this kid. Like, yeah, but that guy. Look, I'm gonna make an NHL video game analogy. <laughs> uh, like, he's got time. He's got time to work on his skating. He's got time to work on the individual still, skills. But he's still a great if, skater if he, too. Yeah, uh, he is. He is. He is. I'm just saying. Like, the sh- let's say the shot. His shot accuracy will get better. Uh, like I said, I'm really making a video game analogy. I think the thing about Caden Gooley that that makes him fit in so easily would be like two to three things: his offensive awareness, his defensive awareness, mm-hmm. and his overall poise. For for a guy that age, you usually don't have those three attributes, and those three attributes alone cover for you know a lot of skill that's yet to come. So uh, I think again, he's mature beyond his years. Uh, he's as Sam as both of you mentioned actually, he's just going through. Uh, the same uh, parcours, the same uh, chemin mas, as you would say in, uh, in French. The same, basically, down, he's going down the same road as some of our best prospects, and uh, I think he's going to be a staple on the blue line. That guy Absolutely. is hands down, hands down there for a long time. You know, and 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 the thing is, is that we 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 know the power play isn't as great right now. We'll talk about mm-hmm. Sapkowski's goal later, Dude. but but. There, yeah, there, there's not that many defensemen on this team that could be a quarterback on that power play, but at least he's still getting those opportunities. You got Wyman on the first wave, and then you have Gooley on the second wave, and he came in like pretty early, a lot early, a lot earlier than many of us expected. So just seeing those little things from Marty, giving these kids the opportunity, I love it. I love it. And they get rewarded for it. They literally get rewarded for it. Uh but yeah, what I'm actually surprised, though, boys, is I'm surprised and I'm not surprised with the play of Jordan Harris. <laughs> like we talk about Gooley, we talk about Jack Eye. We, we love them both, but like, Look, can, can we give Jordan Harris some love too, please? And he's only learning. Uh, I miss 
we needed that style of player for so long. <clears throat> Skates you, you know so well. So, you know what's so funny? Mark Bergevin right now somewhere is smashing a wall because I he know. has he actually acquired so many of these young guys that are now <laughs> yeah. really, really important to our you team. Remember, you remember one yeah, of the years true. before he got fired, he was saying he, he's drafting as if, not as if, he wants to not protect, but he wants to make the future exciting. Yeah. Even and he says something to the fact that like even if he's no longer the GM, that's like you know what I'm saying. So like he knew that he was drafting for like probably a time where where it wasn't him. He well, saw look, the writing on the wall, right? Listen, so he's like, listen, "Fuck that, man! I'm just gonna draft where I draft." And li- listen, whether and we're seeing the fruits. Well, I mean, he acquired Suzuki. He drafted yep. Caulfield. He drafted Gooley. Okay, picked up Jack it, Eye. He, 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 who did he? Sorry, he picked up Jack Eye. He was he, signed, he found he found he found Jack Eye. So, he I don't get it. He could he, he did he, all yeah. this, but he couldn't he couldn't get a center. Apart yeah, from that, yeah, that was that was Kent Hughes. He came in and Kent Hughes was just like centerman, centerman. I'll take yeah. your centerman, centerman. Character like winger, <laughs> <some> character <laughs> defender. Let's do it. <laughs> why do I? Why do I feel like? Can't use would be amazing in like Wall Street or something like that. Like, I, I, oh, yeah, I yeah, yeah. He's definitely probably, he probably has that character. Yeah, he's like, the wolf I'm of Wall Street. Curious to see that. I'm curious to see in the next three years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good well, chance. I mean, Jesus like, I'm curious Christ. to see his, his future drafting. Okay. So, like, his first year, he had the number one. But, like, I want to see Dude, like, like, the next three years are going to be very indicative on, you know, his talent. Yeah. But, skill. Also, but hold on a sec, though. If you think about it, Kent Hughes in his first draft. Okay, not only did he get the first overall pick in his, did he draft Hudson? City. Yeah. Yes. Okay. He did. Okay. There you go. Dra- okay. Oh, hold on. I, I thought it was the draft before. No, dude. He drafted Slavkowski. He drafted Massar. He drafted Beck, and he Beck. drafted Hudson. He drafted yeah, yeah, yeah. Those four guys. That's pretty sick. Within the first two rounds. Yeah. So we we'll see what's gonna happen in the next three years, man. It's gonna be sick. Speaking of but Lane Hudson, have you seen what he did? Yes, yes. yesterday the t- game tying goal and game winning goal in overtime. The only two goals for the game. And is he a right shot? Goals. He's a left shot. Left He's hand. a left shot. Fuck. That's your that's your power play power play quarterback of in the, the future. future, right oh, yeah. there, right yeah. there. <sighs> Look, Zook, I don't know if just go watch some of his highlights. Uh, any of our listeners right now, our viewers. Like search up Lane Hudson with Boston University this season, the 2020-20. Very NCAA kill McCarvish. Dude, it's scary. Yeah. I wouldn't I I mean look, Kale McCarr, he it's ish. Yeah. Hope I, I swear if 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 Lane Hudson could be half the player that Kale McCarr is, we're we're flying. Well, he's and again, slot into a great fucking decor, man. So well, look, another defensive. Mm-hmm. Defensive yeah, prospect that slot in beautifully, is, dude. Lo- Logan Mayu is putting up points too. Is yeah, he's but wait, a game winner. So. Is Lane uh, Hudson signed yet? No. Fuck, that's okay. So no. he has to. But but you can't rush Lane Hudson. He's, the kid's still five eight. <laughs> like, let him grow a little bit. That they're hoping he he can. Don't mm-hmm. you don't need to rush. If it. he has a strong hair, he's going to sign next summer. I have a feeling. Well, listen. The one guy in NCAA amongst the prospects they're look they're hoping they could sign is Sean Farrell. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. they're looking to see what he wants to do. But a lot of these kids too. It's it's they want to pick the education as well. They want to do the full four years. So like Harris, yeah, like Harris, like Evans. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, like with, with, with the Americans. The, the, oh, that I respect though. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> the, it's and it's <laughs> the lot. They don't they don't play that much hockey though. They play no, only thirty 20 games, twenty uh, 30, games. thirty games if they're lucky, if they're healthy. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's just Caulfield. He just had an outstanding year. You know, he it shows that Caulfield was ready, but these other guys in like in like the third round, fourth round. Oh, give, yeah. give give them time. Give them time. Like give them the years. Give them the games. You know, unless they really showcase like okay, which they're, exactly they're what Caulfield, you know. Yeah, exactly like Caulfield did. Like he he yeah. just dominated the NCAA. Yeah, and you go to Laval, your first two games, you're ripping three goals. Like well, not a game, yeah, but you're ripping three. Definitely, he, 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 <sighs> so yeah, man. But uh, listen, it's just right now. Like we're talking about the prospects that aren't on the team. But right, let's look at yesterday. Yesterday, the kids showed up. The kids showed up. The kids came to play yesterday. It was beautiful to watch. And just when I thought, 
when they were down 3-1, I thought, okay, well, you know what? Okay, they're done. They're done now. St. And let's be honest, St. Louis is a pretty big, physical, intimidating team. Uh, if you saw Tarasenko taking runs at Gouli at the very beginning, and that's like, so and fast. The, and the reason why they're taking runs at Gouli is because Gouli's making a name for himself. He's 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 a new, very good young defenseman out there. Like so. I really thought I honestly thought that they were done, but you know, you, you know that they're not gonna go down without a fight. They and didn't feel that they were that far away though. Like even when it was three one, I was like, okay. It, it was a typical they were, they were one shot away, one tip away, and then but that's that happened. It. Well, it's a typical which which could be a typical Marty St. Louis saying this whole season. Like they were beating us, but we weren't losing. Yeah. So it's just it's just another example. And man, the, Caulfield and Suzuki. Like, yes. Jesus. When, Caulfield, like when, Caulfield st- when he stole the puck behind the net, went oh, yeah. around, shot it off the crossbar, it was just like, okay, this yeah. guy's going to score. It's a question of time. Yeah, he, the he first crossbar. He's, yes. but, but he's doing that often, eh? Like, I don't know if if you see it, but he's 40, he's 40 goals. Buzzing. 40 goals and over. But he, he knows he's not only a goal scorer, is what RDS was saying as well. There was like, like he, he does the little things that, like, like you said, he goes at the boards. He takes the puck off people. Like he buzzes. He, he he's in the right slot. But he has to. But the he, second but, he gets the puck, he rips it. He's but he score. has to. He has to. If he wants to remain successful in this league, like he doesn't have the size. But he has to like, watch he it, man. Like he's one. But he's got a he's hit. He's gonna. Well, uh, hold on a sec. He, if he if he's a smart player, which he's showing that he has it. Yeah. If he's putting himself in proper situations, he's not going to get hit that, that often. But you can't expect a guy like Caulfield to go in the in the corners and battle for the puck. Like you can't. He's just he's just not going to win. He's just he's not, he's not good, he could, though. He could steal it. Yeah, he is. He could steal it off the guy for sure. But in terms of being physical to to win puck battles, no, like, you can't physical. ask him for that. No, it, no. It's not it's not his game. No. It's not his game. I was I was very optimistic Kirby Doc on the first line. With Suzuki and Caulfield, dude, he's skating even amazing. Wow, I th- like, I thought he a big skater. I th- I thought it was his best game aside he from moves. the game, aside from the game where he scored in overtime to win it. I thought this probably he had some was... chances. He could have scored a few yep. uh, goals. Yeah, yeah, he was not far. He looked comfortable. I think, out he's there. The, I think he. Well, I think he's the one guy that can really match not only the skill but vision of both players. Yeah, totally. I, I'd say he's the closest one. Totally. Gloy, maybe in the past we would have dreamt that he could have kept up with them, but there's there's no way now that guy's done. Where is that guy? Sorry, oh, so... Sorry Joe. Happy tennis after. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So yeah, well, speaking of the way, like he's a healthy scratch. Dadunov's a healthy scratch. Uh, Rem Pitlick again. I don't like seeing this kid being a healthy scratch. I don't oh, like him. I'm telling you, Marty Saint Louis is. Obviously, he's not a very good liar because I think he's got his hand to the fire. He has to keep Hoffman in the lineup to allow a trade to to eventually come because Hoffman, Dadanov, and Drouin are done. They have no place on this team. None. Okay. In my opinion. Question. Question for you guys: Were do you think Drouin and or Dadanov were healthy scratches because of a potential trade that could be on the way? There's rumors going around that the Canadians at this moment, management, Gordon Hughes, are looking for ways to clear to clear a forward contract to make more room. If they trade any of those three, I've got the polish ready to go. I'm going to go buff Ken Hughes' head. <laughs> That's... I didn't. I don't know I if it's going to be Dandenov. I don't think he's got value right now. No, and and Joe, I don't know, man. Like, what's he fucking worth? I I I I I don't know. I'm talk about ruining I, your your value. This kid, he did everything I, to ruin his value. I I I and 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 it's it's too bad. And I hate Paul. I hate talking about him this way, but at the same time, too, facts are facts, and we're obviously talking about the player because otherwise. If you look at the way highlights when he was with, with the Mooseheads, holy shit. Like, he was playing with Nathan McKinnon, and Drouin was the best player. Like, you look at those highlights. What like, the fuck happened? Something along lack the way happened. Something along the way, I just lack of sleep, or I, something upstairs just didn't go not the, right or didn't go not well. The mental fortitude. Well, I, I, I don't, know, I don't know what it is, but it's... Who, who was it that... 
who was it on the New York Islanders that decked the shit out of him in the playoffs? In one of the first playoffs that he had with the Tampa Bay Lightning, I think it was the quarter, if not the semifinals, the Eastern uh, semifinals. And there was a bigger defenseman on the Islanders who absolutely flattened Drew and I, to me, that was a turning point in his career. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't remember that. I, to me, what I thought was his turning point is when when um, Ovechkin flattened him. <laughs> remember that? I remember, oh, and I remember that game because my father, my father and I, we were streaming it. We were at the Bell Center, but we weren't watching the game because they were playing away. But we were waiting for Sebastian Maniscalco to take the stage, one of our favorite comedians. And as we were waiting for him to come on, we were watching the game. And I remember clearly seeing him get destroyed. I'm like, yeah, no, he's dead. I'm like, oh, sorry, he's done. So, yeah, I, I remember that. Remember what? The hit? Yeah. <laughs> well, that I know that I, I, I'm thinking that that's game. What... No, but I remember you saying he's done from that hit. Well, he was he start and he started off well that season. He was coming off a a, a, a season. A, a I think he was season high. Yeah, he he started off well and then he got fucking. Yeah, like a point of the game. I think at that point. Yeah, he was. He was yeah. putting up points. To, and then anyways, he was like, look, yeah, he's done. Look, it's not official yet. I'm I'm sure it will be within this season. I think he's done with the Canadians, and I hope he finds. I hope his career is given some kind of second chance. There's a rebirth somewhere within it. But uh, look, we, we, we got to look at what the core is doing right now. And coming back to the kids, Suzuki, three points. Caulfield, three points. Doc, I, th- I think Doc had at least one assist or two. Uh, Harris, two assists. You know, the, the, the Vorak hat trick, which was it, was, it was just beautiful to watch yesterday. It was literally, it was literally awesome hockey, and I'm very happy that Slavkowski got his first power play goal, his first career. What a shot! That was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. like he yeah. looked, he looked so comfortable out there. He looked like every he's game getting, he's getting like, oh, I'm so. Isn't happy. he getting better every game? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He's his, his yeah. skating, his um, his reaction time. See, that was one of his issues. Is well, like at first, of course, he was getting used to our North American. Uh, Ice rinks or whatever, and yeah, um, timing. his timing was always a little step behind. Like, but mm-hmm. not terribly, but it, it, it was the case. And you probably saw it the first few games of the preseason, probably the first game of the season, right up until be, even before he got injured, he was starting to show some. You know, okay, he's getting used to it. And then every yeah. game from there on, you see a massive improvement. So, meanwhile, Chris, Chris you. you... I, I, I see you fucking grinning. Go I know it. I know what you're gonna say. Oh, you know, it's, the floor is it's, yours. It's, it's stupidity, but it's like uh, again going back to Rocky Four when he's fighting Apollo Creed in the first first few minutes of the fight. He's just getting knocked around, and you think he's <laughs> you know he's a big goof in the in the rink and a uh, ring. Sorry, and uh, in this case, rink. And then all of a sudden, the coach is yelling, and uh, and he just turns it on, and and that's what it, it's it's kind of funny because we were joking that Slavkowski was this big Russian machine. He looked like the Russian from Rocky Four. He started out a little bit, you know, uh, head head on a swivel, got hit a few times, looking a little bit out of place. But the more time goes along, and the more comfortable he's getting, like holy crap, he's yeah, going to yeah. be a force to be reckoned with. And I think the biggest thing that has to again be exemplified on his end is you go back to his first goal he got hit he went to go fetch that puck and like just head down drove the net and whipped that shot and yesterday just confidence like yeah not arrogance just confidence in place waiting for that puck and he put his body through he used his assets he put his body through and then the puck beautiful shot and more many more to come there was a shift of his where he was really chasing the puck and oh, winning those puck battles, like those many times, like the puck, the puck couldn't get out of the St. Louis's zone, and it's because of him. He was just literally yeah. he was playing the like, chase game, and he was winning those battles. Imagine like, you have a six foot three kid doing that, you know, chasing was, you at that speed. He's six four, like, six four, it's, whatever. It's, it's yeah. It, it, listen, imagine, but, imagine you're trying to get out of there. Like, oh my god, this guy's coming at you, and hard no, for sure. But like, and it's not like Slavkowski's gonna like he plays physical. He doesn't dish out hits, but like. He's gonna use his body just to 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 try to win those puck battles, and you can just stand still, he, dude. 
<laughs> no, he, he, he I, I, I thought, I thought, you know, a, a great game back from from that injury, and yeah, I don't know, I, 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 I think he's giving management a tough time to make a decision regarding whether he stays or whether he goes, and I think he stays. Me too. I think he's I think staying he as stays. well. Too. The the management look naming Suzuki captain, yeah. uh, keeping keep like just all their decisions. I, I won't go through them all, but they've been ballsy. They've done the right thing, and they have clearly demonstrated that they're not afraid of the youth movement. No, nope. I'd say for the first time possibly in the Montreal Canadiens history, the next mm-hmm. move to confirm and to continue or follow up on that movement would be to send either Hoffman. Tuway or Dadanov down through waivers. I think that I think I know it sounds. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Nice, but I wouldn't be. I wouldn't I be surprised. I think that's going to be one of the next. No, so I, I don't. Dadunov. It's I. I yeah, exactly. Same. I don't think it's going to be Hoffman because. Do you want really a contract like that, on waivers with Laval? I don't know. It's no matter what. It's still. What's his contract up. situation? He's getting like four. He. he well, his 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 um his cap hit is four point five, but I think he's getting five million this year, yeah. and then it, and then and then it drops down for the next uh, for the remaining of his contract. But it, that it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough to trade that contract. So I I don't I don't know if Marty's being told to keep him in the lineup. Uh, mind you, guys, it's still early. It's still only nine games, but it's 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 I I, I don't. I, I I don't know why he if, if Joey was here like before we were praising Bergeve, if Joey was here he'd be like ah he signed Hoffman yeah yeah you know, well, Joey is, which is which is true it's it's yeah, it's, no, it's, a, it's, for a, sure. it's a bad contract if he would have signed him for two seasons yeah okay mm-hmm. fine but we still have to deal with him for another season after this one it's they yeah. they got to yeah. find a way he's Seriously, definitely a team though that that will pick him up waivers right sorry Chris. No, like, no, no. Uh, I I want to follow up on that thought. I think I think that some of these guys. I think that if you send a Duhuay, like, look, that's going to be a shitstorm. If Duhuay gets set down, yeah, uh, through waivers, I think, yeah, I think that's they're going to avoid that at all costs. I think they're just going to let it play out for the season, and you know, all the best to you, Joe. Uh, be well. Uh, <laughs> doors always open, except for you to play <laughs> on our on our ice. Go to sweet um, uh, that wait. <laughs> well, Dadanov, that he exactly. Dadanov, I think, is the guy that you can easily just say, "Hey, yeah. like, there's the door," kind of thing. Like, there's no emotional attachment to this guy. No, there's like, he's the he's the easy one to get uh, rid of. But you know what you both are saying? What what hits me so hard is I wish I just wish Mark Bergevin had somebody to help him get signing contracts because. Honestly, that was – you look at uh, – again, we we mentioned it early in the episode. We have him to thank for a lot of our greatest prospects and a lot of the – look at all the reels that are coming out. Look at all the praise for Jack Eye. He's quickly becoming a fan favorite. Like, he's yeah. he needs to – he deserves that recognition. But, Jesus, if he just had somebody to hold him accountable and to kind of guide him through signing – reasonable contracts we wouldn't be bitching about Gallagher we wouldn't be having this yeah. Hoffman problem we wouldn't be having these stupid they even even to a certain degree Armia love the guy but just overpaid for what His he is, is uh, at yeah. 1.3 million for Byron the equivalent was Byron in the time yeah. back in the day and it was four point it was 3.75 million for that contract yeah. like yes yeah, yeah something like that yeah he definitely didn't have that Gordon oh. right next to him yeah, you know he didn't have the tools that that Gordon has now. He didn't have a guy like uh, yeah, like to, to, and again, it's it's just we said this before, but having uh, an agent as your general manager who knows the money market in a sense can't be better than that. It, it, yeah. it can't. So, boys, did you are you guys surprised with their record right now? Yes, nine nine, nine yes. games in. Yes, yes, nine 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 games in. It's gonna be they're gonna play their tenth game tomorrow against the Wild. If you look at last year, last year they were two and eight uh, after ten games. So right now they're five and four. The record surprise. Mm-hmm. Samuel Montalbo surprise. David Savard 
Surprise. Surprise. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Let's give give credit where credit is due. Yeah, no, he's not having a bad start of the season. That's for sure. Joey. He's not having a bad start of the season. Look, I'm not a fan of the guy as well. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, he's blocking shots, you know. Uh, I think he's leading the league, or he's one of the top three or four yeah. hit, the blocking kill. shots and penalty, yeah, penalty kill too. So there's things that he's trending on a good, you know, in a good trajectory. But there's a lot of things that it's David Sabar. Yeah. Right? I'm not gonna well, add more to that. Well, I but, think uh, I, I think I think Chris n- hit the nail on the head with the goaltenders. Okay, right. I want to comment on the goaltending Go as we were it. we're speaking about Sam. Let's before go. starting the show. Wait, which Sam? Oh. Me, me, or Sam Moldumble? <laughs> well, so, well, speaking uh, about Sam Moldumble. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think. Look, like you know how everyone thinks, or not everyone thinks, but everyone says that goalies take a little longer to develop. Yes, they do. Than most players, more most yep. types of players, more yep. most positions. Yeah. Okay. So that being said. If you all r- rewind backwards, Sam Motambo was drafted to do what? Replace Robert Longo, which means he was picked in the first round. Now, you don't get to the first round without having some sort of talent. So let's look at this scenario. What if Motambo is starting to come to his own right now and he becomes a decent, a decent goaltender where he could you know, play 25 to 30 games and not lose them all? Huh. Is that a plausible situation? Yeah, it is. Uh, look, just just don't don't mean to correct you, Zook, but he was drafted in the third round in 2015. Oh, it was third round, okay. Third round, I but I mean, but I mean, look, but I mean, look, 77th overall, which is still okay. It's still not. It's. I think someone on TV was saying he was a first round pick. That's strange. So maybe they missed up. Yeah, but it's TV. Like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but okay, but that being said, he was drafted for with that, that purpose. He wasn't. Uh, he wasn't just a, a pick where they had to waste their pick. And well, look, the goalie. look right now, his numbers in three games, he's he's got a um, a 2.31 goals against average and he has a 0.931 save percentage. Like that's very good for his standards. His, his, yeah, right. But yeah, his, his issue was being consistent last year. He wasn't consistent. Yeah. So if yeah. he could get that, yeah, for sure. He, he was consistently bad. Let's, yeah, let's exactly. Sure. That's the only consistent. Well, I think, but, but I think I think he's he is a lot more confident, too. Yeah, yeah. Look, people and learn, right? Yeah, and that's he's, he's... and that's why Primo isn't here. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. Caden Primo yeah. is not with the Canadians simply because he's just not confident in his play right now. Because if you look at him playing Laval, the kid looks calm, cool, collected. Sometimes he looks a bit too calm. You're like, what, like, oh, like kid, wake up a bit. When he comes up in the NHL, like he's just he's not that. And I, I get still it. think they need to give him a chance. Uh, this year i well this i mean yeah this year it's just at the same time too if if we we know that jake allen could be he he does have a history of being injury prone but i mean if both of them are healthy if both if both allen and Montambo are healthy and they're both playing well i don't see primo coming up i really don't and at the same time too that's not a bad thing like keep the, keep the fucking kid in laval like keep him level out. Just right now, even them, fuck, they're they're struggling lately. Yeah, last place. So I think so. I haven't checked their standings, but like like they they won a game like eight one. They're amazing. Then the game after, fuck, they sucked again. It kind of look. It is it is what it is. But Zook's right. Goalies take a lot more time. And what if Montembeau suddenly becomes like, holy shit? Okay, wait a minute. Yeah. You, you know. know? 70th overall is not that bad too to start with. No, he's I mean he's the third round. 70 players of the best in the world. He was one of them at well, that draft. Well, that's it. And and it look a, a lot of it's gonna come down to him. That that's what it is. I, yeah, but even Allen guy, dude, dude, he he's playing, man. He's not he's making some saves, dude. Dude, like he, price ish saves. But we never but we never doubted Jake Allen. We never right, doubt but... we never doubted what he could do. It's just we all he was injured that. last year too, eh? Well, yeah, but, like but, 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 played... but, but it's because he he can't he doesn't have he no. doesn't have the ability to to go on for so many games, right? Like technique, he, he, right? He, he he's not a he's not a type of carry price goalie that could play forty to fifty games. Yeah. If he's lucky, he could. But no, he can't. But, he can't. but that's why but that's why he gets injured because he plays just okay. so many games. He's a 30, so... 40 player. Yeah, at uh, well, at most, yeah, on 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 a team with with. So a that means Montembeau is going to do half. Of what, what, well, I think games? I, th- I think lot. they're going to do half. It's, half, it's, yeah. it's so it's a lot. 
but yeah, it's it's I'm I'm paying close attention to Jack Adobe's in 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 Ohio State. Like he's leading the league in in wins, and him too, he's got great numbers. Dude, his numbers so, are incredible. Safe percentage, and I think. Hold on here. It was insane. Uh, he's got. He, he almost. He almost has the same numbers like uh, right. like Montembeau oh. actually. I think even better. The last five games, actually, no, no, he's at nine hundred. Yeah, it's because because he he had one bad game. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's, but but in his last ten games, he's at nine seventeen, which is pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, and he still mm-hmm. has a two point uh, two five six foot four. Average. What a beaut. Well, that's it, yeah, yeah. And, and and him too. Like, how old is he? He's twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah, 50, no, he's 50. young. He's young. He's gonna be. Yeah, you. You're right. If goalies develop, what twenty four? Mm-hmm. When did they get into their prime? About not their prime, but like well, I mean, but I mean, fi- prime. what 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 what's so what age is your what age is your prime? Is your prime? What was prices? It was like twenty three ish. <laughs> Eight eighteen. No, no, well, no. He had a few bad seasons to start with. Okay, he had. Uh, one. I think it was two thousand. How lack was outshining he's, him? He's Whatever. he's your guy's age, and he he was your guy's age, and it was two thousand and seventeen. So five years ago, he was about 28, 29 years old. 20, I think yeah. when he was the that most was dominant, prime. untouchable. Yeah. yeah. So exactly that. The average age for players is twenty seven. They give the twenty seven. That's insane, 25. though. Like you think about or, it, they have a six year career. Like of of like if they're lucky, like okay, because the goalie so, once they're 34, 35, you're done. Okay, so if we're talking about kids or players being in their prime physically, in their uh, physical peak, shift, pr- Sammy. Okay, it might shift. Okay, so what what what's gonna happen with Suzuki? What's gonna happen with okay. with Caulfield? What's gonna happen with Doc? What's gonna happen with think... with with Jacki and Gooley and Harris? And then. If you want to add in Lane Hudson and Mayu I, okay. and, and and I Jack think and we're Masar. witnessing it's insane because I think we're witnessing a a, a paradigm shift in the NHL where the now now it's going to be a younger game. It's going to be it is a people game. twenty one and twenty four will be the superstars. It's not going to be the twenty eight year olds anymore. It's going to be the young kids. And that's what we're starting to see, and we're surprising people. We as the, meaning the Habs are surprising teams right now because they're catching them off guard. They're like, okay, well these kids they're fucking talented they were drafted mm-hmm. well and mm-hmm. they developed correctly now they're showing what they could do right away like straight off the bat which in my opinion that's going to be the trend it's going to be the next you know the next stanley cup wave or if you will cycles it won't take seven to nine years i'm telling you it's going to take less if it's well done it's going to take okay uh, like three to four i'd say five maybe no, would be no, long not, i'm telling you you think they're going to win the cup in have, five years? When when all teams are going to embrace this new culture of bringing in young talent early okay. on, it's going to shift. It's gonna, all those numbers are going to change. So in five years, we're going to be at a parade four to five. downtown. Four, four to, to five. five years parade yeah. at downtown not St. Eight, Catherine n- Street. Not nine years, I'm telling you. Okay, so maybe not, not going to be fucking thirty. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, he signed, he signed till the age of thirty. So I don't know. I think. What do you think? It's going to definitely take that balance. It always takes that balance. Uh, let's take the most recent successful Colorado. team, dominant team. Uh, I'm not going to even go to Colorado. I'm going to go back to Tampa because they've been in the finals for far too long. Every single time was their third and fourth line that made the difference. They had obviously their superstars. They obviously had their superstars, but you had certain teams who were kind of able to slow down, maybe not shut down, but slow down their, their top end talent. But then you would have their third and fourth line guys like Sorelli. Uh, Braden Point was like a third line guy back when they, right. they were going for their first cup. And I mean, well, again, when you had, that's when you had, the, when you, when you had that line what? of Blake Coleman, Yanni Gord, and Barkley Goudreau. Like, You're all yeah, young. You're not, yeah, ex- exactly that. So I completely agree that it's going to take talent, but you have to have good talent. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about a team like Philadelphia, Cam York, garbage pick. <laughs> And they missed out on Caulfield. And <laughs> and you think they had Nolan Patrick. What, what was he? Number number one or number two? Yeah, he number was two, number, I think. He was number two after he share. Like after these Nico guys. Heischer, yeah. I, I think there are a lot of teams that are open to this youth movement. I think we're just witnessing again 
Uh, I didn't expect to give this much love to Mark Bergevin in this episode, but I'm thinking <laughs> about the prospects and, and no, I'm thinking about who he drafted. And again, we're looking at like Nick Suzuki is the captain of the Montreal Canadians at 21, 22 20, years old. You have Cole Caulfield, who's becoming one of the most dominant goal scorers in the game. And he's 21. We like at the, I, I completely agree with you guys. The youth movement is there, but it's very, very rare that we're going to have guys that are this young and this dominant. I think we're seeing something special because Whoa. just not not only the stars have aligned, we've had so many years of shitty picks. Yeah. It's like a karma is just shifting Chris, 180 don't, degrees. Don't forget the picks from this summer. They're all yeah. well, I mean, all I mean, if they, mental yeah, right but if they, if they, yeah, <laughs> well, but if okay, the wait, Canadians, wait, wait. If please, the Canadians keep winning. Please. Jesus. Can I, can I see? I know. But we have to admit, look, Lane Hudson was injured. He wasn't ready to play. But if you still consider him let's let's say like this Slavkovsky looked a little bit out of place and we weren't even sure whether or not he was going to be staying he's leaning a little bit more towards staying but if we call a spade a spade Owen Beck Miss oh Miss let's go in order Missar Owen Beck and Hudson in in their own regard they're playing outstanding hockey and especially (sighs) Owen Beck and Missar they deserve to stay more than Slavkovsky did so I mean we're we got Slavkovsky but the guys who deserve to 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 stay and play with us who are playing at another level we haven't even seen them yet like it's it's mind-blowingly exciting it's it's fantastic well I think I think we're gonna get a chance to see Beck play for Team Canada in the next World Juniors so that's gonna help a lot and we're going to see Adam Fantilli too. If you guys are paying attention to what Adam Fantilli is doing in Michigan. Oh, dude, even last year. Oh, well, no, dude, he's better this year, man. Holy shit. He's killing it. He wants he's... a shot at Bedard. <laughs> dude, he, he wants to he projected top five. He's projected top three, dude. Yeah. He's a sentiment of, uh, mm. yeah, I have, dude, if you're telling me if if you tell me, yo guys, you will have a great pick, but it's not gonna be Bedard and it's not gonna be Mishkov, it's gonna be Fantili. Like, um I rather pick Fantili over I, Mishkov. I, 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 just I, for injury reasons. Well, I think so too, and for centerman reasons as well. And that too. Yeah. Can oh you imagine God, our middle is gonna be insane? Well, that's can you imagine your your centerman is Suzuki, Fantili, Ooh. and Owen Beck? Playoff beasts. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's listen I, I again right now it's 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 going to be the story of this fucking season it's the, there's that double edged sword of like you you're happy we're happy to see these kids play the way Look, they are and win the way they are but it's like god damn it like of all draft right. years that we need to be shit you, you said it yourself fans. zook half Wait. fans sometimes let me tell the world how you are right but let me tell the world <laughs> Okay, so all the Kirby Boy fans, extremely. We have this WhatsApp, uh, whatever, uh, or message. I, I forgot what it is, but like, it's, it's, Sammy's the most like bipolar fan this year. I okay? because I admit, he's he's happy when the Habs score, but he's he's also celebrating when they get scored on because he's thinking about that Fantilli pick. He's he's thinking about I want that future pick. pick. So like, it's it's hard being your friend in those moments, Sammy. Okay, but hold on a sec. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Too bad. Any smart fan Deep would down, know. You're happy that they're winning. Come on. I'm happy at how they're playing. It's different. It's Look, different. if they make the playoffs, Deep, you, let's list. say they, they miraculously make the playoffs this year. What what's going to be your emotion? Well, fuck. I know. I'm going to go all saying. in. I'm going to go all okay. in. Of course, I'm going to go all in. Okay. If they make the playoffs this year. Of course, I'm going to go all in. Okay. Can you imagine? Joey will guys, not be happy though. Guys, if they make the playoffs this year, though, <laughs> like holy fuck. Yeah. What if they're coached really well yeah. and and we're lucky? We're, we're teams are losing because they're injured and we're winning, and we make the fucking playoffs. Yeah, but then after that, I get it. I don't, think, I don't think. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think Alan Montabo are gonna. Fuck well, then no, no, for sure. But then you'd be surprised. These kids might be healthy and destroy all those old fucking D that we're playing against. Like you never know. Like who? I don't know. The East we're playing against. Oh, but come on, is pretty good. Yeah, the East is so fucking strong right now. Like Detroit. Well, Detroit's looking. good. I think they're gonna go for it. Ottawa. Ottawa. Why? Why is Boston? Boston, Boston is you, you mentioned old farts. Boston is full of them. He has 18 points. Yeah, but yeah. Caulfield Caulfield is tied with in goals with him with seven. Yeah, but he has nine tied assists for place. or ten assists. Fucking and and the Insane. fucking the rat king comes back yeah. and scores two <laughs> goals in his fucking uh hey, dude. Boston, yeah, man. I'm surprised, but they're another team that draft drafts well. 
Yeah, and develops who, their players. Who, who, who put develops. that? Who who helped put that team together? When they especially when they won. Gort. Mm. Gort. Like, dude, the, the, the East is so fucking strong. Like, Philly is, like, deciding, like, yeah, I'm, we're, we're going to be good because Tortorella is going to kill us, and we don't yeah. want to don't wanna hear him. <laughs> but, look, yeah. at New, look, look at New Jersey. Look at New Jersey. They're top three in the league right now. I think we could play against win. those teams, though. Like, we could play mm-hmm. well against those teams. Yeah, I think so, too. But, again, the youth movement, it's, <sighs> it's, 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 what it's I'm saying, it, man. It's not a man's league anymore. It's a young man's league. It's, Where, it's, uh, where's the Leafs? Mm-hmm. Where are the Leafs? Oh, the Leafs right perfect now. time. We need a, we perfect need a segment. Time. Go, Chris. Did you, did, you, did you not see? At, look, Austin Matthews is getting ready to play at Mullet Arena. Did you see what they handed out of the game? They gave those headbands with the, with the hair. Oh they, with, with, Austin, with Austin Matthews slowly losing, or quickly, oh, in this bald. case, losing his hair, he's, he's getting oh, ready to sign... God. In Arizona in the off season, so that he could have one of those. No, he's got one year. He's got one year left on his. Too. He's got one year left I, on this contract. I, he's gone. Ooh, man. Well, the guy <laughs> again. The guy Christian Dvorak has more goals than Austin Matthews Devo, in one period. In one period, let's let's add that he scored oh my God. three in one yeah, period. I, I so would, Matthew has in a season. I would not want to be. I would never want to be a Toronto Maple Leaf fan, but let alone like no. Hell no. Yeah. We're ahead of the Leafs in the standings. We are ahead of the Toronto Maple Leafs in the standings <laughs> after nine games. I can't okay. believe it. I'm going to go search for... Uh, I'm gonna go search. Everything, everything is just... It's frustrating because I'm going to lead off of what you guys were saying before. Zook in particular was saying, you know, Sammy gets uh, frustrated. It is frustrating because right now we're doing kind of what we hoped, which the young kids are performing. They're giving us the show that we wanted. But god damn it, like Molta Ho and <laughs> Allen, there there's David Savard was supposed to be redirecting the puck into his net. He's he's blocking shots. All these guys are ruining all the plans to get the top. And, and dude, he's setting up fucking French. goals, dude. He's setting he up goals. Like, what, what's going <laughs> okay. on? It's okay. The Marty St. Louis effect across the I board. Hate, I, I hate gonna hate us. I hate to be a Debbie Downer right now, but Austin yeah, Matthew ahead. Austin Matthews is tied for goals with Christian Dvorak. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, look, we'll take it. Tied, uh, he, he, Christian Dvorak and Austin Matthews have the same amount of goals, but yeah. um, for now, <laughs> but for now, but the, yeah, no, the, the Leafs are beating Anaheim. Like, I'm surprised. Speaking of a team that's full of the full of youths, the two youths, yeah, name that movie. Um, oh, fuck, they're having a bad time, my cousin. And, Vinny. Great movie. We need we need a Joe we need a Joe Pesci type of character in the Habs management. I think that would be amazing. Oh. <laughs> what are you here to laugh? Can you imagine? Can you imagine a Joe Pesci type going up with Slavkovsky? Here to laugh. What? 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 I make you laugh. I'm here to amuse you. What am I a fucking clown to you? Yeah, that's a pretty good. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty good impression. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I find you funny. <laughs> so pesky. I heard him Great. sing jazz. Dude, he's, he's he's a good jazz musician, apparently. He is, yeah. I heard him sing. Oh. I'm like, that's him? Oh, my God. <laughs> like, does so, yeah. sound like him. Yeah, man. Yeah. So the, 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 the Leafs are winning. Um, yeah. Chicago. Five Chicago. Five Chicago. Five one. Yeah. They're, but, like, again, all we were, I it's not just the Habs that are surprising us. It's, there's many teams that are surprising us. The Buffalo? Seattle Cr- Buffalo, Seattle, Chicago, Philly. Like those were yeah. all teams that were supposed to be shit. Okay, Arizona. Well, the New Jersey, New Jersey, New Jersey lit well, it up tonight. Whatever, whatever they're drinking in the fucking waters between New Jersey and 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 New York, like Joey's sewer rat water. I don't know if there's some fucking gabagoo shit water <laughs> around there, but like it seems That's to be weird. working. <laughs> But them too, they're 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 still a young team. Still Nico Heischer, Jack Hughes, Jesper Bratt, uh, Dawson Mercer. Yeah, they're they're, they're mm-hmm. still they're still a young team. So look, um before we wrap this up, it's it's I, I, again, it's it's I, I feel like I, I, I don't, I'm not gonna say what I feel like, but I don't know what I want right now. <laughs> so, You're bipolar, so, man. You're happy and I am bipolar and, at the same time. Yeah, but it's okay. You know, it's okay. I, you're allowed to this season. No, but because I truly feel we're one pick this year away from putting the pieces together. Yeah, 
Wow. Like I, I really yeah. do. I really, really do. We have two first. We have two first round picks. Like, but Sammy, we can always get a decent pick through trades. Yeah. Okay. Decent trade through picks. Sh- sure. Or again. we might get yeah. a great pick from from one of the trades from last year. Look at Florida. They're not doing that well. They're uh, second. No, they're, 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 what are you talking about? Oh, they started. Back. Okay, so they won a few. Okay, so okay. But, so how about but, how about Calgary? But there's... Zook, hold up, hold up, hold up. Zook, they're one point ahead of us. Yeah, they have one overtime win more and one uh, loss less and... than we do. So I mean, we're ninth place. Florida could drop down super quickly. Tampa has the exact same record as we do. Like, obviously, it's very early in the season, but. Yeah, as it stands, Florida's up there, unfortunately. That's what we need. That's if if, if the Canadians are gonna win, Florida has to lose. Calgary too. Do. Don't we have a pick from Calgary? No. Or that's for the, the, the next we year. have in uh, twenty twenty five. Yeah, okay. Two from years. that Mon- from that Mon- from that Monahan thing. But like the the conditional pick of this, it's like I'm trying to read it and it's it's so fucking long, and the, 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 yeah, it's so complicated as well. But right now we got Florida's, and it's 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 not protected. So perfect. You gotta hope. Yeah, yeah so we're that's dreaming it. in Technicolor, but Habs make the playoffs, and we get the top three. Oh pick of Florida's my doing. god! <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> oh my god! That's the ideal situation. You win, you make the playoffs, win the cup, and you get. Florida's first overall pick. Win Talk about dynasty. Easy. Okay. Okay. Calm down. We you said we were dreaming in in high definition, or whatever the fuck you said. Technicolor. So, Technicolor. Technicolor. Whatever. So same it's, difference. It's, it's worse than HD. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> I want to know. Sixteen bit. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not tech savvy. But uh, no. all right, gentlemen. Well, listen. We're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. Um, this was uh, yeah, another great discussion amongst the kids. Look, uh, and we keep saying it as long as just the kids keep performing, they keep showing promise and dominance. Uh, I guess I'll be by character. happy, show character too, and that's it. So, to the viewers and listeners, thanks for tuning in. If you like what you see and what you hear, is please like and subscribe on our YouTube page. You can follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Instagram. Instagram, we reached 5,000 followers, by the way. So congratulations to the curfew boys. New milestone, like Nick Suzuki, new milestone, 100 assists. Yep. That's fucking just, we did it in our 30s and he did it in his 20s. So anyways, but uh, but I, that, yeah, that's insane. And he's going to continue leading the way. Uh, yeah. Next game is on, is on. Yeah. <clears throat> Can't speak English. Tuesday night, Minnesota Wild, 8 p.m. Eastern time. They're gonna get uh, hopefully, or hopefully, or hopefully not. They get the revenge. I don't know anymore. And that's that. Just let the wave, let the wave. Just let come. it happen. Just let it. Let it hit you. Let, let the universe take over, right? Let what hit me? No, I don't want to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> Feels good. Just surrender, gentlemen. Until yes. next time. Bye, bye now. now. Bye now.